Today, we are going to dive into a topic that's not just about losing weight, not just about health, although this is all incorporated. It's about honoring God with the body that he has given you. Living in this fast-paced world, especially here in America, we as Christian women, we often you know, pour ourselves out to others, give, give, give. But how often do we stop to consider that our bodies are a temple, a sacred space to be nurtured and cared for, and we tend to care for others first and forget to do that for ourselves or put it on the back burner. Can you agree? So taking care of your physical health isn't just a personal goal. This is also a spiritual responsibility. So when we are taking care of the temple of God's, which is our body, and really understand how aligning our health with God's word can transform not just our bodies, but our entire life. Amen. And I'm willing to bet that you have for a very long time believed maybe what the world has told you, maybe even the lies of the enemy, that you can't do this. You can't lose weight. Now is not the right time. Nothing ever works. And there is a laundry list of lies that the enemy has been feeding many women over centuries about their body and about weight. So I want to invite you to go grab a, my free guide that I just made available this week. The lies the enemy is telling you that is blocking your weight loss. This is really important as a Christian woman, understanding the lies. And then we need to understand what God says so we can stand on his truth and his promises to receive the weight loss and the health we have been seeking. To grab that guide right now, all you need to do is click the link in the show notes. I will place it here, or you can go to andrealyn.com forward slash win, W-I-N. Again, it's andrealyn.com forward slash win. Go grab that guide today. Hey, woman of God. Are you sick of fad diets that only get you temporary results? Are you looking for a simple, foundational, faith-based weight loss framework that will fit into your busy day so it becomes a lifestyle? Are you ready to break free from binge eating, overeating, sugar addiction, self-sabotage, and the battle with your scale? It is time to let the chain breaker Jesus move mightily into your weight loss journey. I'm Andrea Lynn. I am so excited that you're here with me on Christian Women's Weight Loss. I remember what it felt like to be 75 pounds overweight, exhausted, overwhelmed, riddled with poor self-esteem, low self-image, and unworthiness, until I was radically saved by Jesus and He made everything new. With 20 years of experience and numerous certifications in fitness and nutrition, I'm here to teach you everything I know about food and fitness while making faith your primary drive as a busy Christian woman wanting to lose weight and keep it off. If you're ready to let the Holy Spirit transform you from the inside out while getting your body, which is God's vessel, healthy so you can rise up and live out the calling that God has on your life, you're in the right place. May the Lord give you ears to hear, eyes to see, a heart that's pleasing to him, along with a body that will be transformed for his glory. Let's dive in. This is one of those podcast episodes I have notes everywhere. So many pages that I'm praying, Lord, Let's hope we can wrap this up in 30 minutes, make the point, and send it home in a good, beautiful bow. It's a big topic, okay? Because I know that if you're listening to this, you're wanting to lose weight, you're a Christian woman, you want to take care of your body. And I think that sometimes we say we want to, but then we don't because life gets in the way. We put other people first. We say, right, not right now. There's so many other things I need to be doing. But... I just want to say that your body is not your own. And that's not something that I say. It's something in the word of God. And we are called to steward our body well. It's a temple that we need to care for. So can I just start out here in Genesis, Genesis 2, verse 7. And it says this, because this is the root of it all. And the Lord God 
formed a man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. God took the dust of the earth, formed our body, your body, my body, created it, each and every one of us so unique and so different and so beautiful, and then breathed his life breath into us. And that is what keeps us alive, our heart pumping, blood circulating every moment of every day. To me right there is just so profound. And I also want to say that our God is a triune God. We have our Heavenly Father, we have our Lord Jesus, and we have the Holy Spirit. And He created us in a triune way. He created our body, our soul, which is made up of our mind, our will, our thoughts, and our emotions. And He created our spirit. And this is why in my 12-week program, I come at weight loss with three pillars, a triune way, faith, food, and fitness, so that we are coming at it in the way that God designed us. So God is a spirit, right? And God made us in his image, just like him. That's another thing we need to really remember. It's important. When we gave our lives to the Lord, when we said, Lord, I believe in you. I know I'm a sinner. I believe in you, Jesus. Come into my heart and you are my Lord. Thank you for being my savior, right? In that moment, when you gave your life to the Lord, our spirit was made new. He says he makes us new, that we are a new creation when we are born again of the spirit. All this is from the word of God. And I need to get this all laid down so that you understand how important your temple is. So your spirit is everlasting. God's everlasting. Your spirit's everlasting. It's really God's. The body you live in is a tent, okay? It's not really who you are, but it houses the Holy Spirit inside of you, and it houses the spirit of you, the breath that God breathed into you, your spirit, which sometimes you hear is called the spirit man, your spirit man. Maybe you want to call it spirit woman. I don't care. It doesn't matter. You are a woman. You have a spirit. And as a Christian woman, born again, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. You are a spirit who has a soul who lives in the physical body. Okay. And like I said, your soul is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions and your thoughts. And it is your soul that needs to be transformed to the image of God. When you come to life, when you give your life to the Lord, you accept the Lord, your spirit comes to life, made pure. Your spirit needs to continue to be edified, to be built up, to grow, to get more from the Holy Spirit to become more like Jesus. And that happens as you read the word, as you pray, as you worship, right? You're edifying your spirit. You are plugging in more to the Holy Spirit. You're saying, Holy Spirit, take over less of me, more of you. And so it continues to grow and build. But your soul has so many worldly ways, more worldly parts, more things, right? Your emotions are in there. Your thoughts are in there. They're all influenced by the world. They're influenced by the devil. Your will to drink alcohol, your will to eat sugar, your will to go to food when you've had a stressful moment or a stressful day, your will to not work out because you don't feel like it. All of that is your flesh that has to be transformed. And when you become more like God, the flesh begins to diminish. And the spirit, your spirit, because it's plugged into the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is flooding in and rising up and has more 
say, I guess is the only way I can say here, right? Because then your will, it's not your will anymore. That's where we say, not my will, but your will, Lord, thy will be done. That's a powerful thing to say. God is completely spirit. Our heavenly father, right? When he made us, he's completely spirit. So you're becoming more and more and more like Jesus, like the Holy Spirit. And you become more spirit and less flesh. This is all part of the sanctification process. And listen, God gave you your mind. He gave you your will. He gave you your emotions. They are beautiful and they are to be used for his glory and his will, not yours, not mine. So we must submit our body and our soul to the Holy Spirit. You see, when the soul submits to the Holy Spirit, then the body submits to the soul. They're all interconnected here. And every time you submit to the Holy Spirit, that part of you grows. Your soul then submits more. Your mind, your will, your emotions, your thoughts, all aligning to what God wants, not what you want. And the amazing thing is, I, you know, not that the physical body is dumb, but <laughs> it's just the way I can explain it to you. It really does what it's told. Okay, it needs a master. Now, do you want your physical body to be mastered by your mind, your will and your emotions when they've been infiltrated by the enemy and infiltrated by the world? I would probably say that answer for you is no. Would you want your physical body to submit to what God wants? I would probably say you're saying yes. So for instance, Instead of physically, you know, maybe you had a really rough week, you had so much going on, you know, you're a, you're a high level, high achieving, working Christian woman, and you have a, you had a lot going on this week, a lot of balls in the air for work, a lot of things at home you're dealing with. So you've skipped some workouts, maybe you, you've skipped them so much, it's been months, okay? And you've been running to food, but this is because your physical body has been submitting, not to God's will per se, but to yours. Because you're like, I don't feel like it. I don't have the will to exercise. I have too much going on right now. And over time, you realize, oh no, I, I've created some bad habits again. And so what's happening is, all of this is following your fleshly will, and you're doing things that you know, I really shouldn't be doing this. And it's potentially bringing on disease or bringing on things that you don't really need. You're not sleeping well. You know that when you exercise, you sleep better. Listen, given, given up to the flesh. I mean, I, I can raise my hand to this too. My hand will go reach for a chocolate cookie, a chocolate brownie, you know, if I just let my flesh lead, for sure, for sure, I have to say, no, I have to say, this is not the will for, for me. Because if I eat that every day, or often, which if you're eating sugar every day, you're now creating a physiological addiction. But if I allowed my hand to do whatever it felt like, of course, I would go to the cookie, of course, I'd go to the brownie. And in my, in my years, oh man, it's been a very long time now, probably 12, 15, I don't even know, 20. Don't, but in, in those years, years ago, I would go to drinking wine or, you know, smoking pot. I'm just saying, what was my hand reaching for to, to make my flesh satiated was that. But as a Christian woman, as a woman of God who wants to be strong, fit, a God-fearing, strong, fit woman, our hand needs to rise up into the air and worship our Heavenly Father and worship the Lord. Or write, start writing. You know, what is the Lord calling you to write? What is the Lord calling you to do with your hands? That's what we should be doing. 
see, you see the difference in submitting to the flesh versus submitting your body to what God is calling you to do. And out there, you hear a lot of teaching on the spirit, which is so good. You hear a little bit on the soul and you really don't hear a lot on the body. But yet these three are, they come together. This is how God created us. And you see, if you neglect the body and the soul, this is going to impact your spirit. So we have to take care of our body and we have to take care of this soul. It is all plugged together. You see, the worldly ways say, you need self-help for your soul. You need self-help to get your body in order. You have to starve. You have to overexercise. I'm sorry, those are lies because you're not supposed to be in self care. You're supposed to be in soul care. Soul care because we are saying, Holy Spirit, Jesus, Heavenly Father, I want to be obedient to you with my body. I want to be the best steward of my body, your temple. I am a servant of you, God. So I want to submit my body to you. When we're body motivated, worldly, we're selfish. Okay. Let me just tell you, back before I was radically saved, I was this girl. Now, I've been in the health and fitness industry for over 20 years. And coming out of the trauma that I was in, I was so body focused. I would over exercise like crazy. I would kind of under eat sometimes. I would overeat sometimes, all trying to keep my body to have a certain look because I felt that that was my worth. I was very fit. I was attracting men with my body, right? I would wear certain clothes and and I would get attention. This is all body focused because when, when, Men were looking at me and I received attention for my body. I felt like I was hot. I just wanted people to look at me and say, oh, wow, isn't she a look amazing? Doesn't she? She's so good looking. Wow. That made me feel good. That made me feel worthy, believe it or not. It's terrible that I'm even saying this right now. It's, it's like that was a whole different girl. Thank God. Thank God Jesus renewed me. And I used to say, when I get my body to look like this, Mind you, I was already very thin and I was already fit. (laughs) Then I can find the husband of my dreams. Be the famous actor, singer, dancer that I was striving to be. I thought I was going to run the world with this strong, fit body. Well, that was a bunch of lies. And it was all extremely selfish. So what about you? Do you? Do you have any of this still going on? And, and I'm going to say to you, it's okay to want to have a strong fit body. The difference is what I'm saying here is, is that you're not putting your body first that, and you're not using your body as a tool and you're not making your body an idol. You're not saying, well, when I'm fit, you know, I will then feel so attractive and that's going to help my worth. No, that's very different. You see, as Christian women, we need to take care of our body with the motive of pleasing God in a spiritual way. I, when I lose this 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 40 pounds, whatever it is you need to lose, when I lose this 20 pounds, I will be able to serve God to the fullest of my capacity. Let me give you an example. I worked with a woman who needed to lose 20 pounds. She was a, um, I would say, more of an influencer. And she traveled all over the United States, sometimes abroad, to speak in Christian arenas. And she would say, I just don't feel very comfortable with 20 pounds on my body. I'm short. When I put my clothes on, they don't feel good. They're not comfortable. I want to change it. And she also said, and I want to be able to serve God to my fullest capacity. And with this weight on my body, I'm not sleeping well. When I travel, 
I'm not recovering on the flight, you know, from the flights well. So all of this was to be able to serve God more because when she lost the weight, she would be able to give more talks, right? Back to back, be able to fly from, let's say, Texas to California and just go right back into speaking because her body was rejuvenating quicker. So we don't want our body to get in the way of what God is calling us to do. And if we have extra weight on our body, it's going to get in the way. I mean, this is just science here. So I want to highlight what's your motive. Taking care of your temple. That's actually God's temple, your body. Taking care of your body, God's temple. What's your motive? Really understand that. And like I said, it's okay to say, I want to feel better in my body. That's so, that's okay. I want to feel better in my body. I want to feel okay when I put on my jeans. I, I am doing it. Why? To glorify God. You know, if you were to lose 20 pounds in 12 weeks, like a lot of the clients that I work with, do you know people say to them, how did you do it? And they can point to the Lord and say, you know, I joined this program that was faith-based and all glory to God. This is how this happened. I was completely transformed. And then they list all the things that God did for them. That's glorifying God in your weight loss. So just check your motive and align your motive to lose weight to God's motive. You don't need to open the door to the enemy with, with motives that are really about letting him in, okay? For me, like I said, the body obsession, the making my body an idol, all open doors to the enemy. The torment was for real. I couldn't work out enough and still feel satisfied. It was horrible. It was talk about bondage. So think of it this way as your motive, okay? You need to, you need your body to be able to move around the earth. It has to, you need vitality for your body needs vitality. And you know that when you get the weight off, when you take care of it differently, it will be able to have all of that, be able to move better, more efficiently, and have the vitality it needs. And you do this, you take care of your temple by what you put in it, what you're eating, what you do with it, how you're exercising. Water is something else putting into it and and sleep. I would say that those four things, if I had to pick, you know, the best way to take care of your temple is eating, exercise, drinking water and sleep. We cannot neglect our body anymore, okay? We must take care of it well for it to last, to do what God has planned for it. And to fulfill the purpose of why you're here, God has a purpose for you. It means you need to live, not end life early because you're not taking care of your body. You've probably heard me tell you this story before. There is a woman I met. And she said the Holy Spirit was convicting her to get her weight down, to get her health in order. And she didn't listen. She kept putting it off. She did not listen. And the Holy Spirit was giving her just small, small prompts. Stop eating that. Hey, start walking a little more. Go to bed by 10. Small prompts, nothing crazy. And she was not obedient. And do you know that she's not here today, that she is living with the Lord right now. But the thing is, is that the Holy Spirit was prompting her. Why? Because if you take care of your body, it will last longer. And could she, could that whole thing have been prevented? I believe if he was already saying to her, hey, these are some things you need to do and she ignored it, I believe yes. Unfortunately, she's not here for me to ask. One day when I meet her in heaven, I will. Okay, so number one is here that I want you to just really understand your motive of taking care of your temple, okay? Or God's temple, your body. Number two thing that you really need in taking care of your temple is you have to think long term. Think long-term, right? You want to be in good health, in good shape, and make sure that you 
are sustaining good health and a good weight for years and years to come. Now, if you're eating, let's say, I would say bad things like processed foods, sugars, even starving yourself, okay? Not really exercising regularly. Maybe you're just walking and you're not getting results and you're just not feeling better with that, you know. But the fact is, is that your body will not be as strong and it will break down. That's just, again, coming back to all this study over all the years of how the body functions and what it really needs. It needs good quality food. It needs the food that God gave it, not the foods that's in the grocery store, not the foods that are man-made with man-made oils and man-made sugars and all this stuff that is poisoning you. And if you're walking and you're just still not sleeping well at night, maybe maybe the Lord's saying, okay, your temple needs to do some weight training. There's a reason why if you lift a dumbbell, right? And it hurts at first, that pain that we say in the gym, when, you know, when I was working in the gyms, we would say no pain, no gain. Well, there's something to that, meaning you need to have a little discomfort because the muscle breaks down first before it gets stronger. And you know this, if you're not taking care of your body, your mind gets foggy, your brain gets foggy, your sleep is off, and then it just leads to this snowball effect of feeling tired, digestion's off, and you're so focused on not feeling well that it's hard to focus on, hey, okay, what did God want me to do today? What's God have planned for me to do today? How can I serve the Lord That's, I know when I'm tired, it's, I might do it, but I'm doing it half-heartedly because I'm tired. And all of this is, what I'm saying is all of this could be helped and changed for a lot of you listening by taking care of your body differently. I mean, think about it. It takes energy to talk, have a good conversation with somebody else and really listen to them and then, and then give them good, you know, happy, joyful vibes back. I don't even know if that's the right word, but you know what I mean? It takes energy to be a good patient mom. Even if your kids are at the end of their high school years in college, you know, to when they call you on the phone and and you're like, man, they haven't called for, you know, days and you know, you want when your body's functioning well, optimally, you have the energy to deal with your kids better. You're more motivated when you're physically feeling well. But when you're tired, you're given the bare minimum. So this is why it's important to really take care of your body. So going back to you need to be thinking long term, in these smaller moments, you need to decide, what do I need to eat right now? Or when do I need to exercise for the long term? Eating this right now, will it help my body's health in the long term? Ask yourself that question. Exercising this many days this week, will it help my body in the long term? Asking yourself, what will help keep my body lasting longer? And for those of you And I talk to many of you, and I'm very blessed by that. And a lot of you have said, I don't have self-discipline. Well, you know, one of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. And can I remind you that God wants you to have that self-control and that self-discipline in all areas of your life, including with your health. This is a character of Christ, self-discipline. And I think sometimes it just comes down to uh, going back to your will. I don't want to eat the foods you tell me to eat. I don't want to drink the water you're telling me to drink. I don't want to exercise regularly. And if that's the reason, self-discipline is missing. And here's where you get to say, Lord, I need your help. I need your help. I surrender this area of my life to you. And I need you to help me with my self-control, my self-discipline when it comes to eating and exercise. And here's the thing. We as women, we're busy. 
we we want to find an area that we just don't have to address, like not now. And I think that's why a lot of you put this off. You're like, I'll do it later. I'll do it later. Well, your kids are older now. Do it now. I find that this is the area of your life that's neglected. Eating and exercise is neglected. So again, it comes back to surrender this to God. Tell him, you know, I haven't had the self-discipline, but I want to please you, Lord. And ask him to give it to you. And he will. And the self-discipline, the self-control also ties in to the long-term thinking long term. Because when you have that, you then in each moment are automatically thinking long term because God's leading you. You're not leading yourself. We're never going to get results in weight loss or even gain our health back if we are pushing this. Either there's one or two things. You're either putting it on the side burner, like I just said, and neglecting it, or you're pushing with your own will and not surrendering this to God and letting God help you here. And let me just also remind you, you do not have to adopt to worldly ways, crash diets, quick fixes to get you the results. They don't work. You know that, which is probably why you're listening to this podcast. But taking care of your body should be a lifestyle because you want it to last longer for God's glory and God's will. You want it to function optimally so that you feel good. God lives in your body. The Holy Spirit lives in your body. So don't live like you want and do what pleases you. Live to please God. Live with the understanding, like I said, that your body is a tent right now, and it is the tent of the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, I'm going to um, read that to you because first of all, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Amen. Okay, go read 1 Corinthians, all of 1 Corinthians. There's so much about your body being the temple of God's in there. And it also says, this is 2 Corinthians 5, our bodies are like tents that we live in here on earth. But when these tents are destroyed, we know that God will give each of us a place to live. Imagine, imagine that somebody said, Jesus is coming to your house today. Wouldn't you clean up your house? Wouldn't you have the best food to eat? Wouldn't you want to make sure that things are in good working order? Yeah, I agree. I'm with you. That's a yes and a yes and a yes and a hard yes. (laughs) So you have to understand this, really understand that your body is his temple. He's using you for his purposes and his glory. And when you lose this weight, and when you keep your body in good working order, it will be around a lot longer. And this is the reason you're doing this. It's because it's for God. And if you really get that, I am doing this for God. You'll find that what you're wanting to eat will change. You'll find that the food you enjoy will change. You will find that you are going to have motivation to exercise in a different way. You'll find that you feel better. You'll find all of these things about taking care of your body will be different. You'll find that there's this new, this new understanding, this new revelation that God is giving you, which is you represent God. So you're taking care of your body, which is his anyway. Let's just say if he calls it a tent, right? But let's just say, remember when the tent, when the Israelites had to have the tent of God there, they took care of it. It was in order. And you're going to take care of yourself very differently with this revelation. You won't care what people think. 
you will only care what God thinks and what God wants for your health. And I believe that God put this on my heart, that God gave me this word today to give you because he wants to free so many of you right now. This freedom that you've been walking in this bondage of trying to lose weight and feeling stuck and maybe even feeling bound to the worldly ways of doing it. He wants to free you right now. So if you can take a moment right now and renounce, if you have ever had wrong motives in losing weight, renounce that to the Lord. If you've ever had motives of trying to people please in losing weight, Renounce this to the Lord right now. If you've ever had had selfish desires to losing weight, renounce it to the Lord right now. If you never realize that your body is his temple and you realize now that you've done things to it that haven't been pleasing to him, renounce it right now. If you realize you haven't been stewarding your body well, the way that he wants you, renounce it right now. Be free. Be free from however the lies of the enemy that have been placed upon you or that you've somehow agreed to in your mind. Be free from that by renouncing this right now. And and right now, in the name of Jesus, I break every generational curse that has kept you in food addiction. I break every generational curse that has been coming on you about metabolic issues and metabolic problems. I break every generational curse on obesity over you right now in Jesus' name. And in the name of Jesus, every spirit of hopelessness must go now. Every demonic spirit that has kept you bound to sugar and food must go now. All the tormenting spirits that have been bothering you in regards to weight loss and your body and your health must go now. All the worldly motives that have been in your mind, I ask that the Spirit of God bind them now and cast them out into the abyss where they belong, never to return again. Every demonic spirit of insecurity must leave you now in Jesus' name. And from this day forward, I declare in Jesus' name that nothing holds you back from taking good care of the body that he's given you. Holy Spirit, I ask you to give complete instruction on how to take care of their body. Holy Spirit, I ask you to rise up and give them motivation and self-discipline like never before. I ask all of this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Before you go, if you have been transformed or blessed by this, please subscribe, then go to Apple Podcasts and leave me a written review. It is the number one way that you can bless me and get the word out there to other women who are also seeking. Screenshot your favorite episode, share on your social media feeds, be sure to tag me, and I'd love to connect more often, so join my Facebook group. Until next time, remember God says in 1 Corinthians 10.31, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. God bless you, my sister in Christ.